Bayes principle, and I'll go over each and give some examples. Then I'm going to discuss some of the modern tests and finish up with a brief description of what we mean by straight lines in a curved spacetime. First, let's go back and look at Galileo's and Newton's version of the equivalence principle. In my previous video titled The Way of Newton, I went into some detail about this, including current tests around it. We'll now take a refresher in what's called the weak equivalence principle. Let's reach back to when Galileo compared different materials experimentally. He determined that the acceleration due to gravitation is independent of the amount of mass being accelerated. To be fair, he didn't call it gravity. He made observations about falling and rolling objects. Sometime around 1590, Galileo Galilei, while he was a professor of mathematics at the University of Pisa, was said to have dropped unequal weights of the same material from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Being a generally grumpy guy, he wanted to disprove Aristotle's theory of gravity. Aristotle wrote that objects fall with a speed proportional to their mass, and Galileo was nearly certain it was false. Primarily, Aristotle hadn't done any actual experiments, but just logicked it out. To accomplish this weighty defenestration, Galileo wanted to show that the time it took for different weights to hit the ground was independent of their mass. Perhaps they were two differently massed iron balls, perhaps something less destructive to the pavement below, we don't really know. In any event, according to the story, Galileo saw that they hit the ground at nearly the same moment, and judging by the sounds when they hit, that they'd accelerated in their fall, and further, that they fell with the same acceleration. This proved his prediction, and at the same time disproved Aristotle's theory of gravity. This was one of the many things Galileo did to upset the apple cart. He had hypothesized that the distance covered by a falling object is proportional to the square of the time elapsed since it was dropped. And in 1604, Galileo successfully measured this very acceleration of falling objects using the timing of his heartbeat. The result was published in The Two Sciences in 1638. In the same book, Galileo suggested that the variances of the speeds of falling objects of different mass was due to air resistance, and that objects would fall completely uniformly in a vacuum. And that's what we're seeing Apollo astronaut David Scott test on the moon back in 1971 with the hammer and the falcon feather. Just 50 years after Galileo, Newton developed the differing concepts of gravitational and inertial mass. He then compared the periods of pendulums composed of different materials to verify that these masses are the same. His discovery became known as the weak equivalence principle. The weak equivalence principle, also known as the universality of freefall or the Galilean equivalence principle, can be stated in a quite detailed language as follows. All uncharged, freely falling test particles follow the same trajectories once an initial position and velocity have been established. Further, in a uniform gravitational field, the acceleration of each test particle is completely independent of its properties, including rest mass and composition, and finally, each test particle falls with exactly the same acceleration. I described this at length in the first video in the chapter of The Way of Newton. It bears repeating that in order to make this statement, Newton had to assume that forces arise from everyday actions, like lifting things off the ground, pushing things across a table, and launching a rocket with chemical explosives, are all due to natural forces. The inclusion of gravity as a force with no discernible means of action was greatly troubling to Newton. Going back to his statement, which was a core of his finding in his 1687 masterwork, Philosophia Naturalis Principia, mass and weight are locally in identical ratios for all bodies. It's also important to note that this caused a lot of consternation in the world of science. Here, we see the origin of the idea that gravity is a force to be put on equal footing with the force a horse exerts while pulling on a carriage. This way of thinking also draws on the idea that objects are held together by some intermolecular forces, and not gravitationally. The freely falling objects discussed using the weak equivalence principle are bound together by non-gravitational forces. This would apply to apples and oranges and to boulders and feathers. In sum, the weak equivalence principle merely states that all objects fall at the same rate in a gravitational field regardless of their mass.